All right, we are down to the Council of Dads, and we brought this up before at the end of a show one point, I think it was, and we're like, let's talk about this as a topic because it, it kind of hit some buttons for all of us. Here's the, the premise. If you never say no, you're a bad parent. Do you agree or disagree? No. I, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um that's really strong language i know so i phrase it that way if you never if, say if you no never, to your kid are you bad yeah. if you never say no to your kids more than likely you're a bad parent curse thinking about it well i'm just i i because look here's the thing i've gone through a whole lot of these phases where people say i don't tell my kid no because i don't want to reinforce negativity blah, 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 blah. and i'm like uh yeah that's dumb um so um i think saying no you know what i i think saying no is a good thing however i think you need to say no the right way okay Go on. Um, I think what I see is people saying no because they don't want to deal with something versus saying no to teach. So what I mean is, I mean, look, I'll take an extreme example, right? A uh, kid goes to reach for a hot stove. You go, No. Because you don't want them to get hurt. Okay. People say, uh, kids, and then it gets more complicated. Kids go, hey, I want to go to this party. Well, are their parents going to be there? No, but, they're, they're, but they're, they'll be back that night. No, because there needs to be adult supervision. So are you just changing your inflection? I mean, what we do we do? He's a Pokemon that says no. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, no. I mean, so no. but no. so what's what's the wrong way to say no? Um, oh, um it, it it's very situational. So so if some somebody says, Hey, um I can I'm I, I want cereal for breakfast. No. And the reason I say no is because I don't feel like making it for you. But I am handicapped, laid up in the bed, can't go make it for him, Kurt then you're a bad parent. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, but I think, I think if there is a reason to say no, then that's, then that's fine. If you're saying no for selfish reasons, that's less fine. Okay. That's a side note I could argue with. I'll, I'll give you the example of what made me think of this. I, well, besides the fact that it popped up randomly at the end of one of our shows, it made me think of this story. My brother-in-law, his daughter is four days younger than my oldest son you know they, they were born within four days it's the exact same age other than that and so we're raising the same basic level of kid at the same time there was times when you know yeah you know, as they're toddlers as they're young kids they're asking for things and they just ask 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 ask, ask right and there were times when I said no because i was tired right can we go out for the 15th time to go play in the street no no daddy needs to to watch Battlestar galactica and rest buddy uh and there there was just times when like you just you don't know why but you trust an instinct and you go no not this time now that was us my brother-in-law he i don't remember what made us go what are you doing you he would like not tell his daughter no to anything and we went why are you doing that and he goes well, if I can't think of a reason for them not to, why not? I'm like, that's the worst parenting I have ever heard in my life. If I can't think of it, because he can never, he can never think of a reason not to. Anything she asked, she got to do. Because you can never think of a reason not to. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. You're a bad parent. That's horrible. And it, it has had its effects with both of his kids throughout their life now is he a horrible parent no he didn't like chain them in the basement he didn't malnutrition them he didn't put his cigarettes out on their eyeballs or anything no he's not a, not the worst parent 
but there were no boundaries set. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, Debo says to set boundaries, you have to be willing to say no. It isn't as if no has to be default, but it is necessary. And some, and we're honest parents, you know, I'm not saying this makes us good or bad. They kind of come into your selfishness thing. Um, I'll use my wife's example because it's hard. It's easier to think of other people's examples than your own. Uh, but but when our when Crosby got to driving age, man, she's second kid. She watched her her brother learn. She learned really fast. She listened to me, but she's got the confidence, and she is safer. She is smarter, but she immediately wanted to start driving. You know, into Atlanta with her friends or up to these other areas, and my wife was like, "I can't. I can't." I get it. You're somewhat of a safe driver, but number one, I don't worry about you. I worry about everybody, everybody else. But number two, I mean, just all these, some reasonable, some unreasonable fears are in my wife's head. And she's like, I just can't. The answer is no. There's just no way. And, and Crosby look at me and I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not prone to just overruling my wife. and like, that's crazy. Let's do it anyway. That's not how this house works. But I understand why she looked at me and I'm like, look, I, I can't think of a good reason to say yes on this aside from your mom's fears which i can understand a little bit of but i can also understand she's admitting that they might be irrational i can think of a lot of things that can go wrong and you haven't been doing this long enough for me to think of reasons that'll go right so that's that's where i come off there i mean there definitely have been some times and you're not necessarily wrong Kurt. there's been some times like yeah no i just don't want to I just don't want to. I don't care. So, and that can be bad parenting sometimes. Yeah. So, so, but the, so to your, to your first example about, you know, I just need to lay down, watch Battlestar Galactica and just yeah. like chill. That's a no. And that is a little selfish, but it could be twisted a little bit if you say, tell you what, I am like crazy tired today. So not today, but what if we plan on doing that tomorrow? I don't want to do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, okay. All right. But I see where now, that's but now, a different story. Right. Now you're getting into the realm of truly selfish versus tired. <laughs> hey, now sometimes it, it's just uh, uh, being self-centric is not the same as selfish. Uh, but yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, so, as opposed to like the, the kid, you know, in the same kind of scenario, uh, they're all each one of the kids, except for Zoe being the youngest. And she will, I'm sure, hit this phase. Every last one of my kids, I've hit a phase of just, I don't want to do anything. Hey, you want to run a store to me with me? No. Hey, you want to go to this festival on the weekend? No, just nothing. They didn't want to do anything. And, and we, we've given them boundaries on that one too. But uh, Joe, what is something that you've said no to your kids, but then went, maybe I should have said yes. Ooh. Bad Joe. <laughs> Um, I think at like times when I'm, I'm busy trying to work on something, trying to do something like maybe work on cleaning up something or work on, on dinner and my kids, they want me to, to stop and, and play with them for a little bit or something like that. And sometimes I wonder if I really ought to have stopped what I was doing, even though, you know. We got to eat, we got to clean, we got to, you know, there's things you got to do to be, to, to live in society like normal. But that's also stuff that delaying it by 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, it's not, it, in general, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Um, and so there are instances where I'm perhaps doing the dishes where I should have just stopped and, and spent some time with my kid because they're asking me to spend time. Because like Charles said... There comes a time where they're not going to ask you to spend time with them anymore. That's not what they're going to do. You, you want to double dip on this a little bit, though, Joe? You spend time by teaching them how to wash the dishes so that it becomes their <laughs> job. Well, that's not, that's actually not stupid crazy, right? Because I know, because literally, Joe, you could have the best of both worlds. You could say, look, if you come up here and help me with the dishes, then we'll get them done faster and I can spend time with you. Uh, you know, cause in your oldest 10, 11, but yeah, 11, this is a time they should be washing their own clothes. And, and I'm, I'm not saying like you're a bad parent if you don't think, but I, I grew up this way. I raised my kids this way. You're washing your own clothes at this point or helping at least you're learning how to do all that. And you're, when they can get on a stool, they wash. And, and honestly, at a younger age, 
that's how they wanted to spend some time. Is like if I'm, I've got some great photos of Crosby and I in the bathroom with tools fixing the toilet, and she's sitting there cranking the rent or whatever it is to get the bolt off, and like we're replacing a whole tank, and and you know we're we're doing a task together, and the saying goes through with washing the dishes and, and loading the dishwasher and doing their own clothes. To the point, I can happily say there's a lot of things I might be disappointed with with my oldest son, but we don't pretty much do any of his laundry. He comes home, he does his own thing, make sure he gets it his way, and it's good. I like it. Uh, Joe, you said my 11 year old <laughs> is currently sleeping and just isn't aware because he forgot to wash his clothes today. Hey, but that means you're on it, right? <laughs> and and yep. I know I've told stories of my wife about how essentially my grandparents felt like my mother had me and my sister because she just wanted slaves and didn't want to do anything. That's how they saw it. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I can't tell you how old I was, but at some point. It was my job to wash dishes and everything. And my sister and I had to take turns standing on the stool. Like I did it on Monday this week. She did it on Tuesday, but we had to stand on a stool because we couldn't reach the sink. But it's our job to do it. So I didn't, I haven't taken that far. Um, oh, I, look, when my kids yeah. were old enough to walk around, I got them little snow shovels and, there you go. and just to come out and help with the driveway, which morphed into you guys are doing this. Yeah. Yeah. You got this puppy. We got, yeah. This you know um i get what you're saying about the spending time but take that out of it joe is there things oldest kid to youngest kid when your oldest was four because your youngest is four now i believe right yeah yep. so when your oldest was four was there things you can remember going yeah no we're not doing that that because you've learned through life that now the youngest is like yeah sure whatever we'll do that uh nothing jumps out at me not really um I, I try to take time with the kids, but yeah, that's the biggest thing is, I, I mean, as a, as a full-time working father, you're all, uh, you're always gonna, at least if you're a good father, you're always going to worry about how much time you actually get to spend with your kids. Um, that's just how it is. Cause it never feels like you spend enough time with them. Oh, I totally. There are definitely well, times I mean, there I are feel definitely like days <laughs> where you're like, I, I need I need ten minutes to myself. Please, please don't say dad right now. Yeah. I, and Kelsey's over there. Oh yeah. Ten minutes yourself. I've had them all week, fool. Come on. Because that's how I've heard Kelsey. She calls it fool. It's fine. It's good. Uh, my my apparently it's time for me to get new headphones because I am losing one ear on this. It's driving me crazy. Oh, well, oh, there goes there the cable. Go. So that uh, was a thing and we'll see if it'll reconnect uh, we lost him guys he's gone forever um but to to and elaborate this is why charles is a bad dad and now's your time to tell bad dad <laughs> jokes I can't hear you. charles is the bad dad joke yep. uh, um but uh, to to elaborate on on how you started off kurt um using no more as a safety guardrail is definitely one of the better parenting techniques out there uh because like if, you, if you're driving those guardrails they're there to protect you from you know going off a cliff um same way with saying no to your kids it should be a, a guardrail to guide them um into not making you know life altering mistakes right <laughs> yeah and it, I, I mean and, and i think uh uh I, I, I don't, I'm going to pronounce it differently every time I say it. Cause I have no idea. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that, that he brought up was if you say no all the time, you're a bad parent. And uh, I think there's something to that as well. Right. Cause there's gotta be times of yes. You know, I, I, we just have to try to be balanced if we can. And I, and I really do think it, it just gets centered around selfishness sometimes uh, yeah absolutely um i'll say i've made it a habit uh throughout the years to take my kids to work uh you well I worked at home as like hey, as long as you, if i'm on the phone you gotta be quiet well then that you know i set up space for them uh to, to hang out with me to do things uh, now i take them to the office and it's like if i have to have meetings y'all go sit at the table and play on the internet whatever but uh you know, each kid has gone to trivia or karaoke when I was doing that stuff, some cons. So I like Joe, you have a situation now. I know sometimes you're in meetings or you really have to focus. So you don't want your kids down in the basement, but there might be times that you can go, you know what? 
they want to come hang out with dad while dad's working ask me a few questions whatever you know not while i'm work. working no um do, bad I, dad joe no i jokes, never joe. no i never know when i'm going to be working on something that has hipaa information so they they cannot be in here while i'm working now i will pause while i'm working and go upstairs and whatnot but i i am handling hipaa information on a daily basis so because i i get it i get it that four-year-old he's mouthy he'll go to kindergarten <laughs> church and be like oh Mrs. smith has got the hip i don't know what hip is but she got it <laughs> exactly that's exactly how it would happen that's how it goes yep because uh, joe's kids sound like geraldine from sanford and son did you not hear daddy tell me a story <laughs> yeah come on uh now i will say recently i had a, a victory as a father um uh, ryland my youngest middle kid so he's the, the third kid in, out of four he's off and on throughout the years have had issues with his mom that's just where he decides to have issues he won't come at me not really he likes to try to cry behind my back like Ooh, they didn't like this and when i catch him like look here you little punk anyway but the, there was a thing where he basically told his mom no i'm not gonna do that she says well if you don't do this you're not going to uh play baseball and he goes fine i won't play it of course it pissed her off and you know whatever and she's telling me about it so i thought to him, i want to talk to you about that and this is exactly why I, uh, we've had this talk. This is exactly why I told you to do this. And then he's well, blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I'm talking about your BS attitude of, oh, I just won't play baseball. You love baseball. You chose, you've been improving. You really do put effort into it. And for you just to snap off like that, that's dumb. And here was the victory. The victory was, I'm not looking for a number. You can say a lot or little, but how much of your life have I just said, shut up, you're going to do this? Or your mom, either one of us. He goes, yeah, a little. I said, exactly. So as I'm saying it now, as she said it then, shut up. You're going to do this because it's one of those few times that we say, I don't give a crap what you think. You don't know what you're talking about, and you're going to do it this way. And, no, I'm not going to play baseball. No, I'm not going to let you spite yourself to spite us. So after the season, if you want to be a little punk and do that, whatever. I'm not going to fight you. But right now we're here and and we're gonna do it and it worked out and along those lines of what kelsey's saying about tell them why you know and i mean yes there's going to be a time that's because i said so and that's very rare in our house too and you know what when that comes car i think you're like this because you've told all these hippie tree hugging stories about how you raised your perfect kids whatever um you're you're non-felony criminal kids fine rub it in all our faces <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh crap i made a joke and i distracted myself where i was going with that um oh man oh the, I, because i said so because okay why well we try to explain it this way and if, as long as it's not I mean, if you do the why no no you don't get to come with that to you but you kept asking you're just not listening we've explained it three different ways finally it's like because it sits up you're not li really it's because you're not listening but we just bleh, because that's the only time we do because I, I hate that i hate that i mean to to kelsey's point uh kids do want to understand but based on their age you don't have to give them a full-on expl explanation because they like uh, a three-year-old four-year-old no you're gonna hurt yourself that's enough that's all they need to know that's, yeah. that's like they they don't need to know how they can hurt themselves they don't need to know that bowling balls are heavy I, it doesn't matter like <laughs> they just need to not do it um and as you get older you can increase the the or as they get older you, you can increase the explanation but it's not a debate it's not a it's not a a classroom although it is kind of but but it's not really a classroom you don't you don't have to give them all the reasons you, you have to give them enough to make it make sense but yeah i i, I don't like uh because i said so either i i i, I kind of detest that because that's not respectful it's just not every every and I, man i've had to do it at work once or twice and I, i've said if i have to remind you and like mm. i said only one literally only once or twice i'm like 
who are you talking to? Because I'm the COO. You're you're you got to remember. But I got to remind you who you're talking to. It's a bad day for both of us because I haven't communicated well enough. But also, you you've pushed a line that's been pushed too far. Um, yeah. Work is very different. Work because well, I've had I've had those people. I've had those people. It, and, but it's a little similar though. It know? it is it is. But but like adults can be really bad at this. Like really really bad at this. Like I I will have people come up and say. Here's why I think we should do this. Sure. And and I'll say, I understand. There are other factors at play that you're not aware of. And, and I can't go into it for, you know, as confidentiality or whatever. Um, and so we're going to do this anyway. We're going, I'm going to say no to you, but we're doing, because we're doing this. And those adults who continue to argue about it, I will get to the point where I'll go, look, I'm the boss. You need to do what I tell you. And I'm sorry you don't agree, but do your job. There you go, yeah. Um, and 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 because they, they then they get all weirdly defensive and obstinate about the whole thing. And I'm just like, I don't have time for this. I've given you all the explanation that you need. Sorry it's not going your way do the work i i've i came up with that a few months ago i was like yeah my new phrase is all right you've been heard now you'll do it anyway yep yeah i i've I've been very clear that i heard your input i want it this way and actually i've only got to tell that in anecdotal stories i've not actually got to use it just like i haven't been able to use the phrase you're not conducive to the team that i'm building sorry bye you know, the, the the other phrase that I haven't uh, been able to use all that much is, that's the show for tonight. Welcome back next week. <laughs> <laughs>